All right, gang, let's do this thing. Space Engineers, super fun game. Bit of a learning curve. That's where I come in. I think the most fun to be had in this game is on the keen hosted multiplayer servers. But I don't think you can really jump right in, log into those servers and try to learn this game. You got to do a little work up front, learn the basics, at least learn how to survive, protect your grids, keep them powered, mount some defenses, learn the basics, the different systems of the game and so forth. Uh, I'd like to create a short tutorial series here that would have been nice for me to stumble onto when I was learning the game. I didn't find anything quite like, hopefully, what I'm about to produce. So let's jump right in. We're going to create an offline game, custom game. You can search through the rest of these choices um, as you please. But for this tutorial, we're going to do custom game star system. Let's give it a quick name. Let's do um, Earth, Earth Learning. Survival mode, offline. While we're spawning and our drop pod is coming down, we're going to hit the letter V as in Victor. That's going to pop us out into third person mode. You can, then you can hold the left alt key. Earth like drop pod. Okay. And come on. V as in Victor. Left Alt key, scroll the mouse wheel out, move your mouse side to side, and you can see your surroundings. I like that lake, and these cliffs are interesting. Got some trees. I think this is our spot. We're going to roll with it. Hopefully we get a nice soft landing. Let's see what we got. I think they made some changes to the game recently to where this spawn pod will disappear. Um... If you spawn another one, and there's some other causes, along with the batteries dying, that will make it disappear. So we're going to try to get out of this pod as soon as possible. And onto a permanent base. Something wind-powered, solar-powered, so forth. Before I jump out, hit the letter I. Bring up your control panel. See this little I icon here. You click that, and it will show any blocks that have been hidden. We're going to go down through here, and when you're playing survival on the servers, I personally don't like to use antennas at all. Every base that I've ever lost, the big ones at least, playing in a faction, has been because somebody left an antenna broadcasting, or they built a ship that had an antenna that was broadcasting, and as soon as they finish welding it, boom, they're sending out a big neon sign that says, come take all my stuff. So... Get in the habit of always checking the antenna, but the reason we're going through these grid blocks right now, one by one, is to see what we can turn off to save power. The antenna is on, and it's using quite a bit of power, so we're going to turn that right off. But even before we turn it off, turn the broadcast radius down, and then shut it off. That's another good habit to get into. Okay, we'll check the battery. Looks like we've got eight hours, but hopefully we can get better after we turn some of the rest of this stuff off. The beacon we don't need. It's already off. We don't, the beacon is like a, a GPS location, and the pod, the pod is already marked with a default GPS location. The game gives that to you automatically, so we don't need the beacon. Landing gear. O2 generator. Uh, I don't think we need that right now, but... Let's see how far we get. All right, ore detector, don't need that on. Parachute, don't need it. Definitely need a survival kit because that's where we're going to heal. Another thing that we can do while we're in this menu is just to give, we can give our grid a name. Oh, it's already got one. Planet Respawn Pod. We'll call it, hmm, home. All right. Now, before we jump out of here, we're sitting right in the passenger seat. Before we hop out, if you hit the letter I again, this shows what is in stored in the passenger seat at the moment. So we're going to take these items into inventory. We've got a station location on a data pad. If we had excess items in our inventory that were too much to fit into the rest of the storage on the pod, we could store those in the passenger seat. 
that would be a good thing. Okay, let's see if there's anything else in here I want to show you. Control panel, production, info, actions. On GPS, not quite yet. So I'm gonna hop out of here. Notice we're in third person, which I prefer first person, V. But before we go into third person, hold down the left alt key, you can rotate around. Spin in, you can hit J to open your visor, your helmet. Since we're on an oxygenated world, no need to keep the helmet closed. Back into first person. Let me show you around the pod a little bit. You saw the passenger seat come around this way. You see how when I select over or hover over this window here, that square highlights. That means I can open that container and look inside. Hit letter F. This is the H2O2 generator. It looks like two bottles are stored in there. I'm going to put those... Well, I don't need the oxygen, actually. I do need hydrogen. That powers a jetpack. There's a little bit of ice, but we're going to want to find some more. Open up I. That item that we put in our a data pad that we put that has the station GPS on there, if you right-click on that, you can create a GPS marker. And then if you come over to the GPS tabs, you'll see that it put it here, but you're going to want to select sh uh, click show on HUD. And I'm going to click always visible as well. I actually like to name my stations in a certain way so they sort. Okay. And there it is. So 19.52 kilometers in that direction. There's a station over there. We'll get around to finding that. The first thing we're going to need to do is dig a lot of stone. After I finish the pod tour. Okay. Here's our survival kit. This is where we can put the stone. Stone gets processed by our survival kit into iron, nickel, and silicone. It's kind of handy. And one thing about the survival kit, well, I'll get into that after we start digging. Here is where you heal yourself and take on oxygen, hydrogen, and energy for your suit pack. And that's about all there is to this pod. There is a skill tree in this game that I want to uh, talk about. If you hit the letter G, there's a progression tree here that in order to get to these grayed out blocks, you have to build the block above it. And the reason I'm saying that is because right now most of my items are locked. A quick, good way to unlock them. These landing gear, if you hit the letter C to squat down, and you hit 2 to hold your grinder. And I'm going to grind this landing gear just below functional level on the right side of the screen. See where it says there's a vertical bar This is 100%. When I start grinding, it's going to go down. And I'm going to get it just below that red functional line right to there and then hit one and weld it back up and watch what happens I just got new blocks unlocked so that's a quick and easy way so if I go back to the G menu back to progression uh, somewhere in here or there I unlocked all of these items to build now I could Hmm, in fact, why don't I do that? I could build a cockpit now that I've got it unlocked, and I can turn this rover into a ship. I could put the cockpit right there if I try to place the block. See how I did that? I went to G and dragged the item down into my bar. And then if you know if you're holding your welder, I've got the cockpit in number nine on the two bar. Hit the number nine, that brings up that item can place it and then you can rotate these items by hitting page up page down and um, several other keys depending I'm on a laptop keyboard so my keys are going to be a little bit different but in any case you left click to place it of course it's telling me I need steel plate so in order to get steel plate I'm going to turn around just for convenience and come right here because this is where the stone's going to go right in there so step away from that point away from it and I'm going to make a little ramp going straight into the ground. Pick up the drill, hit C to squat down, left click, and start digging. Now, 
Notice how some rocks got dug, but I didn't pick them up. Hit F while targeting, and that picks them up. Now here's a trick. When you're digging, just hold the F key. Just hold it down. Slowly walk forward by tapping the W. That'll make this inclined slope that goes straight into the ground. And hopefully we'll get into some good rock down here. Pretty quickly. Hit L, turn on my visor light. As that red line goes from left to right in the center bottom of the screen, that shows me that my inventory is filling up. Hit C to stand back up. Here's a trick to dump all of the all of the items that you're holding. Not your tools and uh, weapons and so forth. Not tools, weapons, and tanks, but anything that you're holding like stone or materials or parts, components, or ingots, those types of things. If you want to dump all of them rather than having to open this up and drag the item over and releasing it, if you want to do it very quickly, if you have different types of items, that can be a pain, you're dragging, dragging, dragging. So instead, point at the window, hold down the left alt key, and click the mouse wheel. And watch what happens to that red bar as I click it right now. See? All of it. All the stone went in. So now if I go to the production tab, and I want to build, say, one steel plate, I left click, and nothing happens. And a lot of people are confounded by this. Why is it not building? I thought I just put stone in and away we go. Well the problem is, it's not really a problem, a function of the survival kit is that it takes raw material and you have to make ingots. The other processing systems, the refiner and so forth, do this automatically. So if I click ingots one time, you see how it took a, a unit of rock and broke it into separate units of silicone, nickel, and in this case gravel. I should get some iron in there too at some point. There, oh, there it went. Now it went to. I think it's going. Iron is going towards building that steel plate. Yeah, that's what happened. Okay. And that's all well and good, but it gets really old having to click on these ingots every time. So what you can do is if you hold the left control key and left click. UQ10. I prefer holding the left control key plus the left shift key and left clicking and get 1,000. In fact, I do 5,000 or even more, so I never have to worry about doing that again. After it runs out of rock, it'll just hang on to however many it didn't finish right here. And as you toss in more stone, it will just take off building these ingots. Just like that, see? It's saying, it's saying, oh, I don't have any more stone, but I'm waiting. Grab some more. tunnel is a little bit too shallow to stand up fully. Dump my inventory. Now this time as I'm going in, I'm going to point up with the drill and walk in just to drill that ceiling a little higher. Getting into some good stone down there now. Yeah, that's good stone. Okay, now I can run about. Let's do this a couple more times real quick. The thing about the survival start, it's pretty slow. There's a lot of hand drilling. A lot of people go for 
modifying their survival pod to put a drill on it, or some people go straight to creating a mining ship. I like to go for a drill rig, so I'm going to be showing you the path to creating a drill rig in a small base as fast as possible, because I've found that if you create a drill rig with a rotor, so you can sweep drill wide, once you get to that point, then you're dealing with, you know, a hundred thousand ingots or better. And that liberates you from ever having to hand drill again. At that point, you can build spaceships, get into space for your uranium, and you're off and running. One other thing I forgot to mention about signals is your suit actually has an antenna on it that broadcasts out to 200 meters. On the left-hand side of the screen, down towards the bottom, you see an icon for the helmet, letter J, letter X for jetpack, and then the letter O. The letter O is your personal suit antenna that is right now broadcasting. I'm going to turn that off. Of course, my light is still on, but that's okay. And I saw an unknown signal out there. Let's run out there and grab that. These are uh, freebies that the game gives you. And run over here really quick. And there should be a button on there and a cargo container. The button will spawn some sort of random um, outfit, item, grinder, or some other uh, hopefully rare thing. But usually on the unknown signals, they're not too rare. But there are other strong, they're called strong unknown signals that show up yellow. Those are the more rare items, the better outfit items. Uh, I got some interior plates and there should be a button. Uh, where are you? I miss it? Oh, it's right there. And spin the wheel. Hey, I got a terracotta grinder. You can modify your appearance using a medical bay and that's going to be a bit later. So for now we're going to grind this to collect all these free materials. up the hill. Well, while I'm down here, I think I may look for uh, minerals in the ground. So I'm going to use my jetpack to fly straight up and I'm, look for, I'm going to look for discolored areas on the ground. And it can be lighter or it can be darker depending on the overlaid terrain. And I think these lighter patches on this brown area denotes underground minerals. Let's see if I'm correct. Yes. Ooh, gold. Now, I mark my GPS uh, signals locations in a very specific way to keep my list from getting cluttered. You're going to end up with many, many of them as the game plays out. So I'm going to run up. I'm going to point straight at the ground, and I'm going to get that crosshair just over the gold right there. And you could hit the I key. You could hit I and bring up the GPS tab and you could cl uh, click new from current position and then you could type in a name. You could do it that way. I prefer to hit enter to bring up a chat window, front slash GPS space, and then the name of whatever you want it to be right at this spot. I generally name them with the broadest location first. In this case, I'm on the surface of Earth. If I was if I was uh, above the planet, I might do Earth SP for space above. Uh, but, you know, pretty soon you're going to be on asteroids. You're going to be on other planets. You're going to be on stations on the ground, stations in the air. So you, you're going to need, unless you want a big 
crazy mess of GPS locations where you can't ever find anything. Uh, it's best that you come up with a system. I find this works best for me. You start with a broad name and you get more specific as you go to the right. So earth, gold, and how deep was it? I think it was 30 meters. If not, I can change it. Doesn't really matter. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's about that. Well, it's a little deeper than that. 40. Just as simple as that. Now, in terms of getting to the gold, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can drill straight into the ground, obviously, and then after you drill into the ground and you're standing in the hole, you can kind of point, uh, angle up a little bit, and then you can drill your way out to create a ramp. I prefer getting over the spot. There was my marker. There's my marker. I prefer getting over the spot coming off of it a good little ways right to there and I'm going to squat down and this is I'm not going to move my cursor because that's where it's in that direction so I'm just going to slowly drill towards that direction and I should have a, an automatic ramp that I can then walk up out of and drilling a hole straight down into it it certainly can be done but if you run out of jetpack fuel in that hole can be a problem or energy or both I just prefer doing it this way and then I can mark the entrance to the hole from above and it seems to work pretty good for me We don't really need this gold right away, but it's good to have the holes drilled and marked for when you do need them. What we need right away, honestly, is cobalt and silver. There's my gold. I'm not even going to grab it at this point. I'm just going to mark the spot. And once I've bored into the ground like this, I like to name them this way. Gold. And that capitalization denotes that I've dug into the ground, and this GPS can go away. I can delete that. It's a good habit to get into, so things don't become cluttered, or worse yet, redundant. I've also found that generally when you have a gold spawn, you also have a silver spawn somewhere close by. Not always, but nine times out of ten in my experience. I'm going to spend a minute running around looking for the silver. hope this doesn't take too long. If it does, I'll just give up. But we're going to need silver. Tell you what. Let's get an aerial. Most of the... Okay, so most of them are that way. I didn't look all the way up in that direction. So I'll come down here and run in that direction. I'm watching the ground for silver to pop up since I'm holding my drill I should see any that's 50 meters ah there it is or even more in this case okay try to get right over it oh it disappeared can be a little tricky 72 okay you know what I'm gonna come away from it I'm gonna drill get as far downhill as possible like so and right there. I'm going to drill right in. Very carefully, right in that direction. Being careful not to move the mouse once you lock in the coordinates like this. Tapping, tapping, tapping the W key. Holding that mouse perfectly still. Tapping, tapping. W. Don't be fooled to change course now. The tool, the, the drill detected a different silver deposit. I'm not going to change my course and go for that one. I'm still going to hit the first one. There it is. A 
and right crick drilling so I'm not filling up on rock. I am going to take some of this silver though. I'm going to left click drill once I get into the silver deposit. Not too much though. I can't refine it yet. I'm going to store it in the passenger seat. Am I in the silver? No, I'm not in it yet. I don't think. I might be. Is this silver? No, it's stone. Get back on track here. Got fooled by it. There's my silver. It's very similar to stone, just has some green in it. Now I'm holding down the F key and left click drilling to pick up silver. I'm just about full. I did drill a pretty big okay, hole. Okay, so I'm going to run back up my ramp. And mark this silver hole. Hit enter slash GPS earth silver hole. Okay, good work. Back to the respawn pod. Another thing you can do while you're flying, you can hit the letter Q and the letter E. Barrel roll. That was Q, this is E. Now passenger seat to store silver. Don't really need just yet. Okay. Uh, I think the first thing I will do is build a wind turbine with a battery. So... I have on my on my toolbar number four I've got light armor block don't really know which way the Sun goes but I'm gonna use wind so I don't care about solar okay it looks like I have there we go let's just pop it any old place it doesn't really matter now wind turbines two three four five six seven Wind turbine needs to be at least elevated eight blocks in between. So do nine. Nine blocks high, and then we'll put the turbine on top right there. Down here, I'm going to do one. Or, eh, I don't need to do that one yet. I'm going to put basic refinery, a battery, and a basic assembler. Those are my goals first thing I'm going to need to do is power it so I should do the turbine hit the G menu first couple letters of what you're trying to build like I say I could put the cockpit on there and fly this thing around but I think I should gear this more towards getting that drill rig as soon as possible snap it in weld it up now here's the other trick hit G we've got a build planner down here right now that's empty if I go to the item that I started and I right click it with the welder it didn't it grabbed what was necessary to finish that item so I go back to G and I see that now I have something in the build planner and this bar is not all the way over see the shadow area that tells me that it built some of it but it still needs some other stuff and now the build planner is keeping track of what I need. So if I go back to here and I hit the middle mouse button, it's going to grab items to fulfill that build planner. And it's telling me I need six motors. It's like you can just continually click that middle mouse wheel 
if if uh, the letters go away too quickly. Six motors, nine construction components. Build those. Six motors, nine construction components. What else did I need? Twenty-four girders. And I'm probably going to need more stone. You're always going to need more stone. Until you get that drill rig finished. Okay. Dump. Run. Should be looking good now. See how I re rearranged that queue? I told it to basically, if you have enough material to make girders, do that first by putting them at the front of the line. And now I click the middle mouse button because my queue is still there. See my queue, it's still keeping track. So I click that middle mouse button to grab all the items that I need. I need four more motors and ten interior plates. Ten interior plates. And after these are done, I should be able to... This should mark the end of it. I'm going to go ahead and weld up the items that I did manage to pick up. It's telling me... Ten more interior plates. Cute. Yeah, they're going now. All items successfully withdrawn now. I should be able to build the turbine to completion. And we have a turbine, and I have new blocks unlocked. It's raining now, too. Oh boy, that probably means lightning. Okay, we've got a turbine, so the next thing we should probably do... Well, there's two ways we can go about it. We can make the basic refinery. Looks like I need to make the basic assembler before I can make the battery. Okay. Put that into my build planner. Basic assembler. And he has one access port, if I remember right. Yeah. You gotta be kind of um, specific about how you do this. You don't want that access port going into the side of that tower. It needs to be accessible. I'm going to point it out this way. steel plates, 40 constructions. Five motors. A bunch of stone. Always a bunch of stone. Another technique I like to do when I'm doing this drilling is um, once you get down into this good rock here is um, you stand against the right wall I'm right-handed so I'm using my left hand on the WASD keys but you come against this wall at an angle and you can 
push W and A at the same time and walk diagonally along this wall as you're drilling and just do that circular all the way around and it will expand this area out into an opening rather than just drilling in a straight line or drilling down or um, it just it makes for a nice uh, nicer drilling experience like so and then all you get this nice pile in the middle and uh, works out W and A at the same time on the wall. Do this a few more times. Oh, looks like we have too much stone to fit in. We've got it backed up. As soon as I pack the rest of the stone in, I will start welding. Seven construction components. It's working on those. Uh, five displays, five motors, three displays. Had the motors already. I'll tell you, your eyeballs cross after a while when you're building these parts. Energy is low. Gonna charge. Either hop in the seat. Or I need hydrogen as well, so I'll do it this way. Seven computers. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think while that finishes up, I'll grab a touch more stone. Never have too much stone. basic assembler now we can put parts directly into here while we're making the rest of our system so in order to make parts we're going to need the raw material so we'll take the raw materials out of here and we will put them into the assembler Um, 
small steel tubes and plates, but you might as well store them there because the assembler will construct them and keep them, so that's where the pile will come together. So the next thing I need is a basic refinery, and I could put the basic refinery right onto this block. I could snap it right there, but I'm not going to do that. I prefer to put a small cargo container in between. And the reason will become obvious a little bit later. So, I'm not going to be able to finish this container because I don't have cobalt, but I can at least snap it in. The frame. I need interior plates to even get started with it. So I'll do that. Just snap the frame there. And then I will put the basic refinery, which I already had down there, but I'll put it, put it again. And steel plate. Clear this out. Try this again. I don't have any steel plate made. I should be using my other should be using my other machine for this. See, it's hard to keep it straight as you're transitioning from one system to another. The assembler is ready to make plate. like that. Now, when this guy gets finished, I think we're going to be home free. Eighty-seven steel plate. Sounds like a hundred to me. Hold shift, left click. What else? Twenty constructions. My construction components. Ten motors. And a whole lot more rocks. Always more stone. Another thing that I want to mention about playing on survival servers, stealth is always a good thing, and since we've got nightfall here, we're probably sticking out like a sore thumb for anybody that's in the general vicinity because of these lights. So let's go in here, select all of the interiors and the corner lights, shut them off. That's better. And another thing that you can do is if you hit the letter P, as in paint, bring up a color palette and if I'm gonna to try to find something that's semi reasonably close to this grass so I'm just for now until the um, I can take a better look at it I'll just use the darkest green I could mess around with this but I just want to show you this so now I have that color selected so if I put a block in my hand hit number four that block is green because that's the color I have selected if I point that at some specific block on my pod and click the mouse wheel, the mouse wheel button, I paint that block green. If I hold down shift and point and click that mouse wheel button, I paint a large section of it. If I hit shift and control, I paint the entire, the entire uh, grid. So now I've, I'm matching a little bit better. So once you get up a little bit above it, it's, um, nicely camouflaged but be thinking about camouflage in the survival world especially if you you know don't have antennas broadcasting i hope you don't give yourself away
there we go. Basic refinery. And now we need probably cobalt to be able to finish this cargo container, but it works out because we can still reach in there. But once we finish the cargo container, that's going to unlock new blocks. And it's also going to be a very nice transition between these two devices that we can reach right. We can access both of them through the cargo port on our way to a full assembler, full refinery, which is still a ways off. And I think that is going to be a wrap on the first episode, which is nice, hopefully nice and short, just to get things going. Um, this grid is powered, so it's not going to go anywhere. We've got enough battery life to last a little while in the survival pod, so I think we're going to call this one Episode 1. We will see you in Episode 2.